Hey there guys, hope you're having a great day as we welcome you back to another exciting video. So how can China be so quick in making such high-rise buildings? China's speedy development industry has for quite some time been the topic of conversation and for some nations, desirously, with some construction companies building skyscrapers in just 14 days. Today, we're putting on our hard caps to find out how China constructs buildings so fast. At this moment, even in the teeth of COVID, China's dynamic builders are making emergency clinics at high speeds as well as moving startlingly in the circles of high-velocity rail bridge building and skyscraper construction. China stood out as truly newsworthy everywhere in the world as the most recent month for reporting that it had assembled a working 1.5,000 room emergency clinic in only 5 days. Well, all things considered, that was quick. Be that as it may, this remarkable achievement of designing and coordinating was acted in light of a COVID-19 pursuit in Nangong, a city in Hebei territory. This recalled a time when laborers in Wuhan executed a 1,000-bed clinic in barely seven days for the COVID-19 patients. China is known to urbanize its populace quicker than some other developing nations in mankind's set of experiences ever. Its advanced financial expansion is somewhat of a modern economic boom and a little short of dazzling ballooning national prosperity that has lifted millions of people out of poverty and has created some unimaginable framework projects en route. Not just the world's biggest dam and the world's greatest air terminal, yet additionally a real forest of glossy new high skyscrapers. A year ago in April, a Chinese development organization, Broad Sustainable Building, asserted itself to be the world's quickest manufacturer after raising a 57-story high-rise in only 19 working days. The organization, which has some expertise in pre-assembled development, arranged 90% of the design at the processing plant before the site work started and afterwards amassed the excess 10% construction like a jigsaw puzzle at the site. The company's ambition was to assemble the world's tallest skyscraper at 220 floors in only three months. Liu Zhengning reported that once she was tending her garden patch when she saw a tall yellow development crane somewhere out there. Around evening time, the work lights caused it to seem like day. After 15 days, a 30-story inn overshadowed her town on the edges of the city like a glass and steel pillar. She said that she couldn't believe the builders were able to assemble the entire thing in just under a month. A time-lapse video of the project in Changsha, which shows the pre-assembled fabricating building being assembled on site, has piled up more than 5 million viewers on YouTube and left Western architects puzzled. In different nations, the most developed prefab development strategies can lessen building times by a third to a half. The builders of the Changsha lodging improved thumping one half to 66% off the ordinary timetable. Skyscrapers are built with the help of cranes. Brown haze gagged roads reverberate with the beating of drills. Residential elevated structures sprout like weeds in the fields between significant urban communities, making an interminable spread along the nation's east coast. The Chinese company behind the Changsha Inn Broad Sustainable Building says it compromises on well-being. It says its techniques will make China's construction blast more secure, less expensive, and all the more harmless to the ecosystem. Now the question is, which machinery do they use to make it all happen within days? The People's Republic has spent more than $300 billion on nearly every 40,000 kilometers of high-speed rail framework putting it light years ahead of every other developed country on Earth and showing its dedication to a non-expendable public transport-centric future for its 1.5 billion citizens. It doesn't feel awful when you imagine that the undertaking just began in 2008. Presently, the inquiry is how they're getting along so quickly. 
Indeed, half of the appropriate response lies in their outstanding innovation. We should get the engaging named SLJ-900, which is alluded to as the Iron Monster in the regular discussion planned by the Shinong Railway Design Institute and produced by Beijing's WOW Joint Machinery Company. It addresses downright a paragon move in rail route development. China's much of the time-intense landscape that a lot of its rail network requires raising on expansions or viaducts, and for that, the Iron Monster takes an alternate way. Moving along the generally finished extension segment on its 64 wheels, it slides enormous long areas of the new scaffold out over the hole to be laid onto the following key. This sweep is then gotten, after which the Iron Monster moves back to collect the following segment. In addition to the fact that this looks shocking, this 580-ton, 91-meter-long monster assists the railroad with getting fabricated quicker and more expediently than large numbers of the other customary strategies. very similar but even bigger cousin of the Iron Monster, known as the Kunlun, is currently building the colossal 9.1-mile Maizhou Bridge in China's southeast. This amazingly talented machine is capable of shifting 40 vast meters long 1,000-ton box girders. The sheer heft of this mighty machine makes them significantly heavier than any other train. The viaducts will ever be expected to carry, which probably is quite reassuring from a safety point of view. When the trains will be finished building, they will hurtle along these tracks at anywhere from 120 to 220 miles per hour. The nation's blast in tall structures is very much a component of private venture, yet the flourishing economy and huge quickly urbanizing populace have empowered development firms and architects to get pretty innovative in this circle. You also have another example of this wall climbing beast, otherwise called a skyscraper machine, planned and worked by a group of Chinese engineers who documented no less than eight licenses understanding their brainchild, the shrew 2010 behemoth, has effectively been utilized on numerous 100 story plus tower projects. Not least, China's Zun Beijing's tallest tower at 528 meters. Every one of the wall climbing beasts' 12 hydraulic jacks is fit for bearing 400 tons in weight. Also, it constructs a whole floor three days graciously each, and it's also hurricane proof. Some critics argue that China is building too fast. Nonetheless, such speed has brought up issues on the structures of supportability, lifespan, and well-being despite the fact that a few experts have said that the development organizations observe worldwide structure norms and guidelines. Aggressive new technologies injected with close to endless spending plans and an extraordinary level of modern central arranging show what can be accomplished when human might and resourcefulness are applied to the extraordinary difficulties of our age. So what do you think is China's compromise between ancient legislative issues and compelling framework programs? Do give us your thoughts down in the comments section below while also smashing that like button to show us your support. And if you want more content such as this in the future, then all you have to do is hit the subscribe button and do also hit that bell icon to be notified of such videos in the future. And with that, I'll be catching you guys later in our next video. Bye now!